Well, time now for our Monday conversation with three colleagues in the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Susan Delacorte is a columnist with the Toronto Star. Uh, Joël Denis Bellavance, the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for La Presse. And John Iveson is a columnist for the National Post and uh, Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Post Media. Good to see you all again. Thanks for being here, Susan. So, look, we now have a date for the long-awaited economic update. Next Monday it is. What do you expect we will hear from Christian Freeland then? I don't expect a lot of details. Um, I, I'm not sure, again, that they're in any position to predict the future. And we've seen, you know, how much predictions have held through all of this as well. I would just think everything's going to be costing a lot more money. They're going to say it, that things are sustainable. Um, uh, the one thing that I am intrigued about uh, is that the, the, the introduction by the Prime Minister in conversations recently that our resources are not limitless. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if there's any, where these limits are. Because uh, it's been spend, spend, spend all the way since March. And then there's that little hint of, you know, this. there are limits to this. Right. And, and I, I would love to know what those limits are. All right, Joel Denis, we all know that the pandemic has shredded public finances in this country. So beyond bottom line figures and perhaps predictions, what, uh, what does this economic update have to do to give Canadians confidence in the future? Well, what I'm hearing is that uh, they may uh, announce some spending, but, you know, limited spending on climate change initiatives because the fifth anniversary of the Climate Change uh, Paris Accord is coming up, and they would like to signal uh, to the Biden administration that Canada will be on board whenever the, that new administration takes over power and uh, reintegrate the, the Paris Agreement. So they want to be there, and they want to celebrate when uh, this um, Paris Accord is being uh, mark on the fifth anniversary. So that's what I'm hearing, but it's not going to be specifically called per, uh, uh, climate change investment. It will have some kind of more uh, limited name, but that's what I'm hearing. But bottom line is that I think the uh, Kenyan government, the Kenyan people want to know whether the finances are in good shape. And I think the uh, finance minister will have to say a little bit more about that as to how viable are the nation finance coming into this uh, second wave of uh, COVID-19. John, what will you be watching for? Well, another anniversary is it's St. Andrew's night, and I don't think there's going to be a lot in there for miserly Scots, because I think that, that you know, I think all, all governments are now getting worried that they're going to get the blame uh, from a fatigued, COVID-fatigued population. Um, you know, we have spent, and I think we've overspent, you know, the, when the, obviously when the government was making policy on the fly, uh, they were not going to get everything right, but, but it looks like we spent way too much uh, as far as you know, there was $23 billion in lost income, and we spent $56 billion, according to the OECD, you know, giving us now the, the, the highest uh, indebtedness in the G20 for this year. Mm. So I don't think there's going to be any major changes to that. I think we're going to see more of it because now governments right across the country are starting to get worried that they're getting the blame for this prolonged period of people being stuck in their homes, maybe without work. Uh, it's it's not good, so I suspect there will be more spend, spend, spend. And even though that Christy Freeland says we have a compass, we know where the safe harbour lies, that's not what business groups are saying. They're saying this economy yeah. right now is the most fragile since the 1930s. Susan, let, let me turn to you here. We, you know, do do you think this uh, uh, this is the opening of the great economic reset that uh, conservative finance critic Pierre Polyev has been. Uh, talking about and others have suggested is at hand this uh, upending of the world order as we know it using the pandemic as a springboard. I mean, it's maybe hard to tie that specifically to the economic update, but the prime minister and, and his ministers have talked a lot about uh, the opportunity uh, to change the way we deal with people in our society uh, because of the pandemic. It's taught us some lessons. Are we going to see some of that? Yes, definitely. Um, I, I've been amused by this... Um this whole business of the Great Reset, and I, I saw them using it today, even in um, in question period, when uh, when we saw Pierre Polyev being accused of of reading the internet too much. <laughs> I don't want to date myself, but um, um, there's that old uh, commercial. It was Madge, you're soaking in it, uh, in, implying that when we're already there. We are. Never mind the conspiracies. We are already in a Great Reset. And it's coming from the right and the left. The right is saying that after this pandemic, it will be, you know, we saw it with Doug Ford last week. We're going to be by Ontario. We're going to be Canada first. There, there's a lot of things being reset in our mm. society. And I, I was intrigued when the prime minister was asked about it last week. 
And he more or less said, yeah, um, I, I do want to fix things. And there's a lot that needs fixed after this pandemic or during this pandemic, long-term care. So um, I, 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 it's been amusing to me to we, see the way the government has just kind of decided to take it on. Okay, yeah, maybe we are in a reset. You John, know, uh, yeah. John, John, what do you think? Well, I think Pierre Poiliev knows exactly what he's doing with that, that kind of language, that coded dog whistle language. Um, you know, this was a, a, a conspiracy theory. I remember Christopher Hitchens used to describe conspiracy, conspiracy theories as the exhaust fumes of democracy. And this, this thing is uh, coming out of, out of the internet, this, the Illuminati and the Freemasons and George Soros and now Justin Trudeau are going to remake society and take people's property away from them. And well, yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's trying to appeal to those people. And, you know, it seems to me that Erin O'Toole's strategy of trying to grow the people, the base of the people who vote Conservative is fair enough when he's going after union members. But do you really want to be going after the lunatic fringe too? And that seems to be exactly what... Uh, Exactly what Paul is trying to do here. Uh, 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 Joel Denis, what do you think? Well, if you want to have a look at what kind of the great reset would look like, just go back to the throne the speech from the throne that the government presented in uh, September. Everything is in there. Um, and we all know that in every crisis, that presents some opportunity to do better. The government wants to do uh, something better, improve this social safety net, for example. And as, men as um, Susan mentioned, improve also uh, the way treatments are. Uh, offered in the long long term care uh, um, uh, residents uh, because the government wants to pr introduce for example national norms so the great reset has started i mean if you want to have a, a conspiracy theories and it started with the speech from the throne that was tabled in house of commons in in read in the senate by governor general on september 23rd yeah. okay uh susan let me let me move back to this country and the and the covid-19 response and and I guess what, what's happening in Alberta, Jason Kenney hasn't addressed his province now in, uh, what is it, uh, 10 days or uh, close, I guess 10 days. Uh, even though Alberta is reporting these record high cases, uh, we're expecting to hear new measures from the Premier, we think, on Tuesday. His absence from the field has led to all kinds of speculation that, you know, he wants the federal government to order more restrictions so he doesn't have to take the blame. We all spent time covering Jason Kenney's career in federal politics here in Ottawa. What do you think of uh, how he's handling this COVID crisis now? Well, I'm thinking of circulating a theory that he's hiding in a basement planning the Great Reset. But uh, <laughs> but I think what uh, is more likely, he's in isolation. He's come into contact again with um, with someone. It is unusual. He hasn't been virtual as he was the first time. Um, I was going through some polling numbers last week. Uh, the decline in his popularity through this pandemic has been remarkable. And... Uh, I, you saw it re being raised in the House today, too, what is going on in Alberta. Mm -hmm. there, there's, it's certainly a crisis there. I think he is, again, to borrow on the things, he is involved in his own reset. I think we're going to see stricter measures coming down in Alberta. Don't know whether they'll sign on to the federal government um, uh, app, but I, I do think that Alberta's strategy through all of this has been judged, and Jason Kenney is... is uh, rethinking it all. He's a smart guy, uh, a, a very a good politician, and I, I do think that this is just him uh, recalibrating, uh, to use an old Harper government phrase. What do you, what do you think is happening here, John? And is it, uh, you know, is, is, is it a, a, could this have a lasting effect for Jason Kenney after he sort of blew into Alberta and took politics by storm, and now a lot of people wondering about his leadership out there? Well, you know, as I was saying earlier, I think that the, the tide has turned a little bit, and that you know, we saw all those incumbent governments uh, getting re-elected in, in British Columbia and New Brunswick. Um, I think, though, that that this second wave is now hitting governments, and none more so than Jason Kenney's. I mean, obviously, Kenney tried not to impose new restrictions in keeping with his, his philosophy and the philosophy of a lot of people in Alberta. But Alberta has got more cases today than Ontario mm -hmm. and Quebec, which is unbelievable when you think of their relative population sizes. Yeah. So, you know, clearly they have to come out and do something, much against his better judgment, I suspect, okay. but I do think this is going to stick to him. All right, I just have about 20 seconds for you, as well, Denis, to finish up here. What's happening in Alberta? Well, there was already a very deep economic crisis, and add to that this pandemic crisis, so the Premier does, know how to, uh, does, not, uh, does not know how to deal with both now, because it's really, really hurting the 
economy of Alberta more than any other provinces. And so if he does impose more restrictions, it will okay. hurt more the economy. All right. Uh, remember, okay, the Great Reset. Uh, meet you here again next Monday. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks all. And we'll talk again soon. Take care. Take care. <laughs>